Saturday was absolute chaos in the world of college football. Did it teach us anything about our Michigan State Spartans? Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of Locked On Spartans is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for kicking off your week with us right here at Locked On Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. Please rate, review, subscribe, comment below how you're feeling at the bye week right now. Three and three, it's, it's okay. And also get ready for a show with not just Michigan State football, but later on with Jeremy Dewar of Spartans Illustrated. Yes, we're going to talk that Michigan State hockey big series ahead against number two Boston College. But hey, before going any further, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com is the place to find us if you ever want to reach out with any questions, comments, or anything on this lovely bye week. Now, before we start talking about Saturday's chaos, you know, any lessons that we could learn about our Michigan State Spartans as Vanderbilt beat Alabama, Minnesota beat USC. I, you know what, guys? I, I got to make a correction from the postgame show on Friday night. Cal Halliday, a tough night for him. We also said, you know, I'm shocked they didn't go to Jordan Hall. Didn't really see him on the availability report, and I was dead wrong on that. He was listed as questionable, okay? He had an undisclosed injury in that game. Johnson Smith actually talked about in the postgame press conference that he was, quote, close to playing. So, sorry about that, guys. Jordan Hall was injured, certainly why you saw uh, not him so much on the field on Friday night. Also, some news here. Guys, homecoming in a few weeks, yes. Night games are the new noon kickoff in the Big Ten these days. Michigan State is under the lights yet again this season. 7.30 against Iowa on NBC. Uh, no one cares about this, but I will be at a wedding that night. and Might have to wait till Sunday morning for that episode of Lockdown Spartans unless you want me in rare form for that one. That's where you're going to test the limits of an open bar that evening. My goodness, I, I'm still feeling okay about that game. Anyway, guys. Let's tie up some loose odds and ends from Friday night because there's two things that we talked about like I, that I was really, really interested to see on Pro Football Focus after the game. And it's not like their objective grading stats so much as it was like the missed tackle stats because it looked gnarly on defense for our Michigan State Spartans, okay? Jordan James, it seemed like he ran for 500 yards after 48 broken tackles. And you know what? Well, yep, of course, on Pro Football Focus, it comes out that your Michigan State Spartans – it did look that bad. 20 missed tackles on Friday night. That means over the last two games combined against Ohio State and Oregon, that is 35 missed tackles across those two games. All right, just to juxtapose that from a really clean team, Oregon has 31 missed tackles all season in their five games. So it has been a little on the sloppy side, of course, against a really good competition. But, man, Michigan State – they have struggled in the tackling department after starting the season somewhat strong in that regard, too. But we've gotten some emails, too, some tweets about you know Cal Halliday's performance on Friday night. And we'll, we'll answer it because I was also a little interested to see how Pro Football Focus was going to grade him. 36.8 is what they gave him out of, out of a scale from 100. And, you know, just to put it against the rest of the country – Amongst linebackers that had at least 10 snaps over the weekend, he grades 337th out of 347 linebackers. So, yes, I know there's a lot of people upset, myself included, that, like, why is he still getting 59 snaps? And Aaron Alexander, who only got seven snaps, actually looked somewhat decent. Not saying it would have changed the game at all, but I still you maybe get the kid more run than just seven snaps. So, there you go. That's how bad it looked. Now, to throw Cal Halliday a bone right now, Last year, his highest graded game, according to Pro Football Focus, was a 73.4 against Iowa, the team Michigan State is going to be facing next week. A team certainly more one-dimensional than Oregon, a team certainly, while good, Iowa's a solid team, not Oregon good, hoping for a good bounce-back game here against the team that he did really well against last season. The other thing that I really wanted to know is just yards after contact. What was Pro Football Focus going to say about that? Because... 
Sure, like an underwhelming game for Nathan Carter, K. Ron Lynch, Adams, but I was just curious how much help they're actually getting. Those two gentlemen had 14 carries for 43 yards. Pro Football Focus has you at 42 yards after contact. All right, they just had one yard. That wasn't after contact. These boys were getting smoked behind the line of scrimmage all night on Friday night. So, yes, I know that it's aggravating when Nathan Carter doesn't get any yards or K. Ron Lynch Adams looks like he's fighting for his life. But I'm hearing a lot of things like, oh, these guys suck at running the ball. These running backs are horrible. I, I don't know if you could put a school bus back there and they're going to get any additional yardage, guys. Like, they are getting popped pretty good behind the line of scrimmage, which brings us to Saturday's chaos. First thesis of Saturdays is like, well, first of all, holy smokes, how did that happen? How did the Commodores beat the Crimson Tide? How did the Gophers beat USC? Um, of course, Arkansas beat Tennessee too. You had a and throttle Mizzou. It was a crazy, crazy Saturday. But also, why did it look so distant for Michigan State in their last two weeks? Where if you play both the Buckeyes and the Ducks 100 times, I think the Ducks and the Buckeyes win those games 100 times out of 100. Well, it's not a sexy discussion point. It's the offensive line. All right, that's where it starts. And of course, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, sexiness to it, if I could use that word again. It is your playmakers, which I, maybe Michigan State just doesn't have a lot of. So, you know, the second thesis is, is you know, we talked a lot about growing pains and still talk a lot about growing pains with our quarterback. And this is on me. Maybe more of it should have been focused on the offensive line, too. All right. And also, well, just literal pain with you know, uh, Christian Phillips and Gavin Brocious out, Stanton Ramble missing, missing last week. But let's take a look at Vanderbilt, what they had to work with in their massive upset against Alabama, okay? Their right tackle is a third-year starter. Their right guard is a third-year starter on the offensive line. Their center, a fourth-year starter. Their left guard, well, he was a starter, but at UTEP last year, still starting experience. And then their left tackle, Full season starter at Liberty last year. All right. A lot of experience. A lot of experience on Vanderbilt's offensive line. They are all seniors or grad students. And against Alabama, able to rush the ball 54 times for 3.1 yards per carry. Now, 3.1 yards per carry isn't screaming off the page. But it was good enough to own possession to do it 54 times and control the tempo of that game. Also, in the pass protection, they only allowed six pressures against the Crimson Tide, zero sacks. On Friday night, Michigan State, they allowed 13 pressures on Aiden Childs. And, of course, you need the playmaker, Diego Pavia. No turnovers, 16 of 20 passing. He did great, but the offensive line let him cook. Now, let's travel a little further north to our Big Ten brethren, Minnesota. Stuns USC. All right, guys, let's look at their offensive line, see what the Gophers are working with. Left tackle's a third-year starter. Their right tackle, a third-year starter. Their left guard, a second-year starter. Now, their center and their right guards, both first-year starters, but that is some experience at your tackle positions. They were able to rush the ball 40 times for 4.8 yards, just three pressures allowed against USC. And, guys, they have this, too. They got a really nice playmaker out of the backfield. He can catch passes, too. Darius Taylor, 200 all-purpose yards. He was cooking. Now, let's look at Michigan State right now, see what we're working with on offensive line. All right, it's Ashton Lepo at right tackle. Okay, First-time starter, 96 snaps last year, but, yeah, still you know a new starter. I know we're halfway done with the season, but yeah, it's still new for him. At right guard, well, now you have Brandon Baldwin, a guy that is playing in the interior for the first time in his career. Center, Tanner Miller. Obviously a great player. Second team All-American. At left guard, an FCS All-American at left tackle. Now playing left guard in Luke Newman. And then, well, left tackle, redshirt freshman, coming off of a knee injury last year. Stanton Rammel, who, of course, missed the Ohio State game. He had Rakeem Johnson there. A guy that came here as an interior offensive lineman. It, it is a patchwork offensive line. And, oh, yeah, your top two playmakers, well talented, are still too young and a little bit raw, too. Of course, Aiden Childs is one guy we're talking about. We've talked ad nauseum about him. Nick Marsh is your other guy, okay? He is talented. Still a little raw. St outstanding player, but you need the offensive line healthy and for established playmakers to be on your team. And, of course, it, there's a lot more that goes into that than just those two things. But as we're watching Michigan State on Friday or last Saturday against Ohio State, wondering to yourself, 
why doesn't even seem like we could even be, you know, involved in this game in the long term? We talked last week against Ohio State how the first half looked competitive, okay? I think that it would have been distance in the second half, even if it was tied score at halftime, even if those plays went different ways. But it's the depth of the offensive line. It is the experience of the offensive line. So, yes, not sexy. I know that we're asking for more patience here. Wait for these guys that are fortunately or unfortunately getting a lot of experience so far this season. It's going to be a, a work in progress here. Those are the lessons I took out of the upsets on Saturday as well. You know what? In order to have a dream, you need experience on the offensive line because that also lets your one or two or, you know, hey, if you're really lucky, three playmakers cook. That's that's where we're at right now. Those are the lessons I took out. If you took any other lessons out of those Saturday Saturday's games as it pertains to Michigan State, again, comment below on YouTube or reach out to us at – Locked on Spartans at, yeah, locked on Spartans at gmail.com. All right, guys, back with Hockey Talk here in a little bit. Just need to talk your ears off about Roy. That is right. It is our Roy Player of the Week time, and this week we're showing some love to Charles Brantley. We are putting $100 on Charles Brantley right now through Roy, the ultimate platform where you get to directly support your favorite athletes. Download Roy on iOS or Google Play Store. No middleman, no collectives making the decisions. You get to decide who you back, and it's as easy as a few clicks. And, well, with the best part with Roy, you know exactly where your money is going. Roy gives you the power to decide who gets your support in the NIL landscape. Time to put your money where your mouth is. Every contribution from from fans like me and you helps keep the athletes committed to the team because, well, if they decide to transfer, you get your money back. How is that for some transparency over at Roy? It does not get any better or any easier, but you know, just to make it a little better, Roy is doing their part to bring fans closer to the schools and athletes with an exciting giveaway. They're giving one lucky fan two tickets to any game of their choice in November. Here's how to enter. Just download Roy in the App Store or Google Play. Use code LOCKDOWN when signing up and you are already entered. Or hey, if you're already on Roy, make a payment on any athlete's campaign and you will also be automatically entered. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Go to joinroy.com for official rules. Download Roy and try it out. There's no subscription, no recurring fees, and for as little as $10, you can get in on the NIL game. It's Roy. Support the players. Change the game. A big-time weekend, an even bigger season ahead for Michigan State hockey. Calls for the biggest MSU hockey guests possible. Yes, guys, of course, we're talking Jeremy Dewar of Sparns Illustrated. Jeremy, our boys are 2-0 right now. Massive, massive weekend ahead against Boston College, the number two team in the country. Michigan State, not too shabby, number four in the country right now. Before we start talking about either of these weekends, let's climb up into the rafters where those banners from last season are. Let's get a broad overview look of this Michigan State hockey season. No secret. Everyone remembers it last year. Massive season for the boys. Point blank. Like, what are the goals ahead for this season? Is it as simple as repeat as Big Ten champs, go to the Frozen Four, or where are you at with the whole lot of hockey ahead right now? I mean, I think that's got to be. I think uh, like if you ask anyone in, the, in that room, it's win a national title. Like, they were – pretty aggravated sure. uh, to uh, the way that the last season ended. I mean, you know, losing to our tribal and um, after you beat them four out of five times throughout the year, like it's going to be uh, a bad taste in your mouth. But I mean, and, and some of it is just your typical camp like stuff that everyone's going to say. Right. But I mean, like the, there's four guys who left NHL contracts on the table. So I don't think they came back just to, not that this is a thing to not be proud of, but I don't think they came back just to win a Big Ten title again. Like they they accomplished that. So I think their goal is bigger than that. You know, it's get to the Frozen Four and you have Trey Augustine behind you and you just see what happens with two games at the Frozen Four, right? So yeah. uh, that's that's big picture what their goal is. And I don't really see any reason to uh to harbor that or to bring that goal back down. <laughs> um like that that seems doable. So it- whether you're just like nose deep in MSU hockey or you're just a casual fan that watches, you know, whatever they're on Big Ten Network during the season. Let's start talking names here because there's a huge name that will not be on the team anymore. Number two overall pick to the Blackhawks, Artem Lajanov. Okay, excellent player last year. Is it Isaac Howard's team, though, this year? I believe he's one of the NHL contract guys that you were talking about. And look, just two games into the season for Michigan State against Lake Superior State. My man's already got five points on the season. That's not too shabby. So is this definitively Isaac Howard's team? 
or is it a little bigger than that right now? Uh, I mean, I lean on it's a little bit bigger than that. I don't think that uh, Isaac is a guy that, at least until this point, has shown that he can carry a, a college game like that. And and I think just the just the act of being a forward versus a defenseman, like as a defenseman like Levshinov, I mean, he was on the ice 22 plus minutes a night. You're not really going to see any forward do that unless gotcha. it's a penalty filled game and he's out there every power play or something. Like I just. I don't think anyone can have that impact as a forward versus a defenseman just based on the way the game kind of works. But um, but no, I mean, first weekend, <laughs> he definitely made it look like he's ready to take charge. And he's the type of guy that, like, would love that, right? Like, he, you see him at the World Junior when he was – he had a great World Junior last uh, December and January. And, like, the guy's not shy from the camera. He loves – he would love to be the guy, not in any, like, ego way, but, like, he's fine to, to take that on. I just don't think that uh, he's going to have to carry this team that way. Um, but uh, but from a from a marketing standpoint, yeah, I think I think he's yeah, going to sure. be the name that everyone right. knows uh, outside of Trey Augustine. I think Trey Augustine, yep. you know, on top of the fact that he's really good, being a Red Wings pick will always get a little extra pub around Michigan. But um, yeah, I think between those two, those are going to be your headline names for sure. And in the offseason, Charlie Strammel, he transfers from Wisconsin. This is a first-round pick from the Minnesota Wild. Like, just simple to say, like, this is a seismic pickup, or just how big was this news for Michigan State? Where does he fit into the picture here for the Spartans? Honestly, a lot of similarities to when they picked up Isaac Howard. Like, I mean, they picked up Isaac Howard before last season, and he, same thing, was a first-round pick of Tampa, um, but really struggled his freshman year at Duluth. And, uh, and I think you can say the same about Strammel. Like, Strammel is a little bit different case in the fact that, uh, I mean, he even struggled more in his freshman season, but it also really just an odd fit. Like, he commits to Wisconsin under Granado. They hire a new coach who's the exact opposite, right? Like, their okay. their coach who they bring in uh, in Hastings is a guy who wouldn't really recruit the NTDP, doesn't want 17-, 18-year-olds. He came from a Minnesota State program where all of his freshmen would be 21, right? Like, he – he ran it very differently. So I think it was just a really, really weird, bad pick uh, or a bad fit. I think, you know, if Strammel had another year, he probably decommits and goes somewhere else to begin with uh, in all actuality. But, um, no, I think it's I think it's one that is huge. And just like Isaac, he's trying to kind of save how his career has started. Like, he was a first-round pick, and it did not – I mean, he was a healthy scratch. He was okay. out of the lineup a lot of nights in Wisconsin. So – uh, you know, he's trying to prove that that was just maybe a bad fit. And uh, he had a good, you know, he started here this weekend. I think he looked good. He's a big, big kid. He looked huge on, on video even. Sure. Um, so I think that's going to be helpful because MSU's forwards are a little bit more on the undersized side of things. So, uh, but I would, I would caution anyone to just look at the first round, same way that I tried to with Isaac last year. Like, yes, a first round pick, um, but he might have been – I think Minnesota took him in the first round as, like, a long-term, like, okay. hey, this kid could grow into being something great. You don't want to miss on your first-round pick, but it's also – it's it's different than the NFL or, or the NBA where the kids come out and they're, they're already ready to be pros. Yeah. Like, you take your first-round pick knowing that he's probably not going to be in the NHL for four years. So, um, you know, we definitely uh, uh, could see him mature a lot, but I think he's going to be a long-term project. See, that's great context. That's why we have the expert on because I see the first round pick and I'm just like a moth to that stupid flame and I just go right into it. Like, oh my God, this guy's going to have 30 goals for us this year. It's going to be great, guys. Oh, I can't wait for it. But yeah, no, that, that's good to know to be patient. But what better place to go if you're trying to revive your career than the Adam Nightingale School of, you know, resurrection. So that's, yeah. you know, good good call on his part. Obviously, we're going to root for him to get on the right side of things here. So it's all that said, you know, we just banged off a few names. You also mentioned, you know, top goaltender Trey Augustine. Fantastic. Well, just super broad question. What has you the most excited this season? Like, whether it's a player, whether it's a style of play, what's got you, the hockey head, just fired up for this year ahead? Uh... I mean, honestly, it's just that I don't see any holes in this okay. team. Um, I still would like to see them have a little bit more on the blue line, a little bit, you know, like uh, as a former defenseman, I could always build that up and say, okay, like, you know, sure. always, I'm always going to find faults where I can. Right. But I think that yeah. like when they, even when they released the line chart Friday and you look at it and you're like, yeah, I don't know, man, like they kept the entire fourth line together, moved up to the third line now, but like you have a lot of chemistry. Um, if Carson Dorwart was in the lineup, Friday this weekend, I think they would have had three full lines together from last year. Uh, So like just 
the carryover from last year should be really, really good. Um, and, and Trey Augustine, one year older, like last year we had to deal with, I kind of wrote about in my, my recap at Spartans Illustrated, how I, people were kind of concerned. We went to overtime with Lake state. Like, should I be concerned? And it's like, no, I mean, this team last year lost to air force and Trey Augustine got pulled. Okay. Like it, it's, you know, they were really young last year at the beginning of the year. There's a lot of <laughs> learning, learning on the job last year that shouldn't happen this year. Like uh, they should be much more ready to go from the beginning. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, nothing and and not to not take it off of msu but even around them like minnesota and michigan had some late departures that just kind of okay gives you more confidence as you head into the big 10 season so still more to come with our guy jeremy doer but first need to talk your ears off about fan dual sportsbook america's number one sportsbook whether it's nfl whether it's college football season mlb playoffs which Lord knows I'm getting a few same game parlays in for that action. I do it all over at FanDuel. And I, guys, on top of the sports I just named, I want some hockey for you. That's right. Michigan State hockey right now 12 to 1 on FanDuel to win the national title this year. All right. That's the eighth best odds in the country. We'll see if they're going to change should they sweep Boston College coming up. So, hey, if you think 12 to 1 is a great price, Go ahead, head over to FanDuel.com right now, and that is where to get started. And like we said, I, they're hooking it up for football fans too, right, guys? Like NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get the hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You also get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Again, guys, $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That is over at FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. Again, FanDuel.com. You know, like actually, what you brought up about Lake Superior State, and we'll talk about you know the last weekend and this upcoming weekend against Boston College. But you know, on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, going to plug the company there. Michigan State was heavily favored against Lake Superior State. I mean, go to overtime the first game, you know, decisive five to one victory the next night. I, no concerns coming out of that weekend. That's just chalk it up to all right, first seat or first game of the season. It be like that sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it was a weird game. Like, I mean, the second okay. period, I think MSU was on the penalty kill nine minutes out of the 20. They still okay. managed to get a goal that period. So, you know, they get a goal, they go up one nothing, and they they give up a goal. So it's it's 1-1 going into the third. And then in the third, the their conditioning and their, you know, skill that they have from Will Morlock took over, and they got – I think they outshot, like, say, like 25 to 4. So gotcha. you, you run into a hot goalie or you just you, – you hit a couple – I think they hit, like, two or three posts in the third. It's like, you, you know, one of those shots is a quarter of an inch to the left, and we never even go to overtime. You still say maybe the goal <laughs> the goal difference wasn't yeah. what you wanted. But um, really, I think Lake State was pretty fortunate to, uh, to hold on in the third period and get it to overtime, and then you – play up three on three with what MSU had. And it was, of course, they, they got the goal that you needed. So not really worried uh, at all coming out of it. Like, I just think that it, the next night they have a different goalie in that and you pump five in. So it's just kind of one of those where uh, guys are figuring out what they're doing early in the season, plus a hot goalie on one night, probably, you know, for him until they get into conference play, that's probably their biggest, I mean, that's going to be their biggest game of the season, right? Like mm-hmm. Michigan State up at the Sioux. Um you're going to catch their best performance for sure. No question. And look, just because it's a bye week for football this weekend doesn't mean it's going to be dead in East Lansing by any means because, yes, it's it's number four. Those icy Spartans are taking on number two Boston College, trying to avenge what happened on the gridiron a few weeks ago over in Chestnut Hill. But, Jeremy, a lot of returning guys from last year's Michigan State team. You know a lot about this team already. But still, with this top five matchup ahead at Munn, what are you still looking to learn about this team for this uh, doubleheader of games coming up? Uh, I mean, so you came out of the weekend and they gave up two total goals to Lake State. So that's a really good start. But playing BC last year, they gave up six and five. So, um, you know, they got swept at BC last year. And again, a team where uh, MSU was like not, they weren't ready for for BC yet. I mean, like they, they got better as the season went on. They played them very early and, um, you know, and, and BC at the time was a top five team and MSU wasn't ready for that. So I think for me, it's about, can they keep this more in like a, a four, two type of game, you know, whether they win or lose, you know, like, how do you, how do you have BC in? Cause BC has got multiple NHL players in their front, you know, in their forward group. Um, 
you know, and they're going to get up and down much quicker than, than Lake State did. So I think it's going to okay. test test the defense a lot more than you just saw against Lake State. Um, and with that, like, discipline, like, one of the big problems they had last year, and it really – it was an early season problem and it stayed around, was they took way too many penalties, um, you know, and, and negate some of your skill advantage when you're killing penalties all night. Now, they're not going to have a skill advantage against BC. It's going to be even, but it's going to be mm-hmm. more – are you playing into their advantage and giving them an extra boost uh, too often? So uh, it was a lot of penalties last year, but the hockey East refs tend to be that way. So I kind of am curious to see gotcha. how we get refed this weekend and uh, if it's a little bit more five on five play. And what just scares you the most about Boston College? You said you know they got a few NHLers on their team, but if you could just pit it to one thing, which is hard to do for the number two team in the country. Yeah. What does have you losing the most sleep this week leading up to game time? I think like let's take the forward group out of it. Like they're they're super talented, but I also say like I mean you play Michigan, you play Minnesota, you're gonna play talented forward groups all season. Like that's for sure. That's gonna happen. I think what you kind of lose when you play BC is they don't have a goalie who's a level below Trey Augustine. Like you know when you play a Michigan and you know that their forward group is gonna they're gonna get their couple goals. You can say well their goalie's not much. We're gonna we're gonna get our goals too, right? But like yeah. with Jacob Fowler. Um, you know, him and Trey basically since they were 14 or 15 have been one, two for American goaltenders, like back and forth. Like it's just been, you know, one, one year Trey might be up on Jacob and then Jacob has a better year the next year. And just, uh, so, uh, you know, matching up with them, you, you can't rely on the fact that yes, they're going to score theirs, but we're going to get ours. Like they, they have a Trey Augustine in net too. So I think, you know, that's going to be something is just, can you, they got to him on the first game of the series last year. It was a six, four game kind of more open, open ended, um, you know, got a couple past him, but then he rebounded Friday and was much better. So uh, I think being able to get your couple goals and hopefully get them early with a packed mine would yeah. be huge, uh, huge for them this weekend. So let's just, you know, all close our eyes and dream still a lot of season left, but let's say Friday at 6 PM on big 10 network. And then Saturday also six, Big Ten Network Plus, woohoo. Jeremy, l- l- let's say the Spartans, those icy Spartans out there, they sweep the Eagles. Are you backstroking in the Red Cedar River that night? Do we have to get your bail money ready for Ingham County Jail? Like, how hard is the celebration going to be? Or are we just at a place now where it's like, good, you're supposed to be here. This is the team you are supposed to be. A lot of season left. Just take me through the mind of a manic MSU hockey fan. Should they walk away with a two pack of wins here against uh... number two BC? The Spartan dogs are already excited. We see. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking. We've got uh, the Spartan dogs excited about this hypothetical. <laughs> uh, man, back backstroke in the red cedar. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I have no problems. I, I don't like Boston schools, so yeah, I'm gonna be pretty okay. excited. I mean, like, there's just a lot that goes into it. I mean, uh, not even BC in particular. Just like it, like I think everyone's probably seen the movie Miracle, and they make the joke about oh, excellent. Well, a bunch of guys from Boston, a bunch of guys from Minnesota. That's gonna work the thing the problem is that they don't have a lot of Michigan guys in the eighties in that movie, but we hate them too. Uh, like the okay. three of us just hate each other. And then we, Great. and the three of us, we gain up and hate the rest of the country because yes. they're not as good as us, but that's kind of how it is growing up in hockey, man. I like guess like those three versus everyone else. But then among those three, God, do you hate guys from the other two? So I'm going to be pretty excited. Like we have not had a lot of success against BC. Yes. We won a national title over them, but we've only beaten them one other yeah. time um, in our history. So to, to go out and beat this BC, you know, especially if it's a series sweep, like you're yeah. probably looking at being the number one team in the country after that. And, and you're probably gonna be number one for a while. Cause the schedule is not super heavy after yeah. that uh, and everything. So I think, yeah, it is just, you know, for me, like as someone who's tried to you know be around MSU hockey for my whole life, but also grow it and get more people interested, like football's on a bye week. This is a yeah. chance that you can win a top five series at home when people aren't distracted with other things, MSU basketball is really not going, you know, football's on a bye week. Like some of the other smaller sports are having great starts, but like this is a chance to really capitalize on something that just kind of lines up perfect. So uh, yeah, I might have to take my phone away. Like, like my wife might have to do the Michelle Obama and take my phone away. Cause yeah, I will be blowing funny. up all my Boston buddies yeah. right away. <laughs> like I will be texting every Boston guy in my phone and I've got a lot uh, that are going to be hearing from me if we sweep BC. So 
that's gonna be the one thing is that the phone may end up in the red cedar just to just oh, to keep my just to keep me employed at uh you yeah. know representing massachusetts hockey players going forward so that's that's probably just a good heads up play right there but no you know yeah. what, just to hammer that point home friday it is on actual analog big 10 network it's not big 10 network plus or c-span seven like it, it we can watch it if you have like a basic cable plan or YouTube TV. So that'll be exciting. Uh, just like, you know, the last 16 minutes with you, Jeremy, I always love talking hockey with you. Thank you for educating me, the listeners, the viewers, giving the people out there what they want. Anything you want to plug over there at Spartans Illustrated before we let you go and enjoy this week ahead of this. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we'll have a, we'll have a preview of uh, the series and we, you know, we added some writers on for more hockey coverage this year. So it's going to be great. Yeah. Nice. Um, you know, Jake Benke coming on and working with me as well. So uh, we'll hopefully uh, have a lot more with with better video this week, be able to do some video stuff moving forward too. So Fancy. Um, definitely uh, definitely trying to get people more excited this year. You can already feel it. Like uh, it's it's crazy. Just like not people that know me. It's not about me at all. But I, I'm in the store and I hear people talking about like MSU hockey. I'm like, why? This is so Back. weird, man. Like so weird Back. that people even know we have a hockey team after the last decade. So <laughs> that <was> it's, tough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is good to good to see like everyone back in a month sold out in like a minute and a half or something crazy. So get went back out. to being the toughest ticket in town to get, which I, I don't love that part because I'll be watching yeah. it at home much more, but uh, I probably would be anyways with a four year old. So <laughs> if I could just shout out one other uh, proud sponsor of this podcast, Game Time for all your ticketing needs, flash deals, last minute deals. That's right, baby. I'm a company man, but God, Game Time is just also simply the best. Just like you are, Jeremy, you are the best. Just like all the viewers, all the listeners, absolutely love every single one of you. We got more great guests coming on later this week. Don't want to spoil them yet because I, I don't want to jinx anything and have something canceled. So, but hey, you guys know where to keep it tuned. Lock on Spartans right here. Your team in green and white five days a week. Love you all. Go green.